Chapter 2, Digging No, said Tom, that's not fair. He and Alan and Joe were wandering around behind the barns at Billy's house, arguing over where to dig the first worm. What do you mean it's not fair, said Joe? Nobody said anything about where worms were supposed to come from. We can get them anywhere we want. Not from a manure pile, said Tom. That's not fair. Even if we didn't make a rule about something, you still have to be fair. What difference does it make where the worm comes from, said Alan. A worm's a worm. There's nothing wrong with manure, said Joe. It comes from cows just like milk. Joe was sly, devious, a schemer. The manure pile was his idea. You and Billy have got to be fair too, said Alan to Tom. Besides, we'll dig in the old part of the pile where it doesn't smell much anymore. Come on, said Tom, starting off across the field, dragging his shovel. If it was fair, you wouldn't be so anxious about it. Would you eat a worm from a manure pile? Joe and Alan ran to catch up. I wouldn't eat a worm, period, said Joe, so you can't go by that. Yeah, but if your mother told you to go out and pick some daisies for the supper table, would you pick the daisies off a manure pile? My mother wouldn't ask me. She'd ask my sister. You know what I mean. Alan and Tom and Joe leaned on their shovels under a tree in the apple orchard, watching the worms they had. Hmm, not him, said Tom, pointing to the nightcrawler. Why not? Well, look at him. He'd choke a dog. Geez, exploded Alan. You expect us to pick one Billy can just gulp down, like an ant or a knit? Gulping, not eating, said Joe. The worm's got to be big enough so Billy has to cut it into bites and eat it with a fork off a plate. It's this one or nothing, said Alan, picking up the nightcrawler. Tom considered the matter. It would be more fun watching Billy trying to eat the nightcrawler. He grinned. Boy, it was huge. A regular python. Wait till Billy saw it. We let you choose where to dig, said Alan. After all, thought Tom, Billy couldn't expect to win $50 by just gulping down a few measly little baby worms. All right, come on. He turned and started back towards the barns, dragging his shovel. Chapter 3, Training Camp. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Billy was doing push-ups in the deserted horse barn. He wasn't worried about eating the first worm, but people were always daring him to do things, and he found it was better to look ahead, to try to figure things out, get himself ready. Last winter, Alan had dared him to sleep out all night in the igloo built in Tom's backyard. Why not? Billy had thought to himself. What bad could happen? About midnight, huddled, shivering, under his blankets in the darkness, he began to wonder if he should give up and go home. His feet felt like aching stones in his boots. Even his tongue inside his mouth was cold. But half an hour later, as he was stubbornly dancing about outside in the moonlight to warn himself, to warm himself, Tom's dog, Martha, had come along with six other dogs, all in a pack, and Billy had coaxed them into the igloo and blocked the door with an orange crate. And after the dogs had stopped wrestling and nipping and barking and sniffing around, they'd all gone in to sleep in a heap with Billy in the middle, as warm as an onion in a stew. But he hadn't been able to think of anything special to do to prepare himself for eating a worm. So he was just limbering up in general, push-ups, knee bends, jumping jacks, red-faced, perspiring. Nearby, on an orange crate, he'd set out bottles of ketchup and Worcestershire sauce, jars of picali and mustard, a box of crackers, salt and pepper shakers, a lemon, a slice of cheese, his mother's tin cinnamon and sugar shaker, a box of Kleenex, a jar of maraschino cherries, some horseradish, and a plastic honey bear. Tom's head appeared around the door. Ready? Billy scrambled up, brushing back his hair. 
Yeah. Tara, Tom flung the door open. Alan marched in carrying a covered silver platter and both hands. Joe slouched in along beside him with a napkin over one arm, nodding and smiling obsequiously. Tom dragged another orange crate over beside the first. Alan set the silver platter on it. A chair, cried Alan, a chair for the monsieur. Come on, said Billy, cut the clowning. Tom found an old milking stool in one of the horse stalls. Joe dusted it off with his napkin, showing his teeth, and then ushered Billy onto it. Ladies and gentlemen, shouted Alan, I present my masterpiece, Verma la mud. He swept the cover over the platter. Ah, cried Billy, recoiling. <laughs> The first worm, the huge night crawler sprawled limpingly in the center of the platter, brown and steaming. Boiled, said Tom, we boiled it. Billy stormed about the barn, kicking barrels and posts, arguing. A night crawler isn't a worm. If it was a worm, I'd call it a worm. A night crawler's a night crawler. Finally, Joe ran off to get his father's dictionary. Nightcrawler, earthworm, a large earthworm found in the soil surface at night. Billy kicked a barrel. It still wasn't fair. He didn't care what any dictionary said. Everybody knew the difference between a nightcrawler and a worm. Look at the thing. Ugh. It was as big as a souvenir pencil from the Empire State Building. Ugh. He poked it with his finger. Alan said they agreed right at the start that he and Joe could choose the worms. If Billy was going to cheat, the bet was off. He got up and started for the door. He guessed he had other things to do besides argue all day with a fink. So Tom took Billy aside into a horse stall and put his arm around Billy's shoulders and talked to him about George Cunningham's brother's mini bike and how they could ride it on the trail under the power lines behind Odell's farm. Up and down the hills, bounding over rocks, rum, rum. Sure, it was a big worm, but it'd only be a couple more bites. Did he want to lose a mini bite over two bites? Slop enough mustard and ketchup and horseradish on it, and he wouldn't even taste it. Yeah, said Billy, I could probably eat this one, but I got to eat 15. You can't quit now, said Tom. Look at them. He nodded at Alan and Joe, waiting beside the orange crates. They'll tell everybody you were a chicken. It'll be all over school. Come on. He led Billy back to the orange crates, sat him down, tied the napkin around his neck. Alan flourished the knife and fork. Would Monsieur like eat carved like fives or cruise fives? Ketchup, asked Joe, showing his teeth. Cut it out, said Tom. Here. He got ketchup and mustard and coarse radish on the night crawler, squeezed on a few drops of lemon juice, and salted and peppered it. Billy closed his eyes and opened his mouth. A whoop! In. Tom sliced off the end of the night crawler and forked it up, but just as he was about to poke it into Billy's open mouth, Billy closed his mouth and opened his eyes. No, let me do it. Tom handed him the fork. Billy gazed at the dripping ketchup and mustard, thinking, Oh, gross. It's all right talking about eating worms, but doing it. Tom whispered in his ear, Mini bike. Billy poked the fork into his mouth, <laughs> chewed ferociously gulped, gulped, his eyes crossed, swam, squinched, shut. He flapped his arm wildly, and then opening his eyes, he grinned beautifully up at Tom. Superb, Gaston. Tom cut another piece, ketchup, mustard, salted, peppered, horseradished, and lemoned it, and handed the fork to Billy. Billy slugged it down, smacking his lips, and so they proceeded, now sprinkling on cinnamon and sugar, or a bit of cheese, some cracker crumbs, or Worcestershire sauce, until there was nothing on the plate but a few stray dabs of ketchup and mustard. Bells, said Billy, standing up and wiping his mouth with a napkin. 
So they are done mid the first curse, not seconds. Let me look in your mouth, said Alan. Yeah, said Joe. See if he swallowed it all. Certainly, certainly, said Billy. Look as much as you want. Alan and Joe scrutinized the inside of his mouth. Okay, okay, said Tom. Leave him alone now. Come on. One down, fourteen to go. How'd it taste? asked Alan. Gooty, gooty, said Billy. Very fine, very fine. Hoo-hoo. He flapped his arms like a big bird and began to hop around the barn, crying, Gooty, gooty, very fine, very fine, gooty, gooty. Alan and Joe and Tom looked worried. Uh, yeah, gooty, gooty. How you feeling, Billy? Tom asked. Yeah, stop flopping around and come tell us how you're feeling, said Joe. They huddled together by the orange crates as Billy hopped around and around them, flapping his arms. Gooty, gooty, very fine, very fine. Woohoo! Alan whispered. These crackers. Joe edged towards the door. Don't let him see we're afraid. Crazy people are like dogs. If they see you're afraid, they'll attack. It couldn't be, whispered Tom, standing his ground. One worm. Gooty, gooty, screeched Billy, hopping higher and higher and drooling from the mouth. Come on, whispered Joe to Tom. Hey, Billy, burst out Tom suddenly in a hearty, quivering voice. Cut it out, will you? I want to ask you something. Billy's arm slapped slower. He tiptoed menacingly around Tom, his head cocked on one side, his cheeks puffed out. Tom hugged himself, chuckingly nervously. Uh, <laughs> cut it out, will you, Billy? <laughs> Billy pounced. Joe and Alan fled, the barn door banging behind them. Billy rolled on the floor, helpless with laughter. Tom clambered up, bracing himself off. Did you see their faces, Billy said, laughing, climbing over each other out the door. Oh, jeez, Joe said, pale as an onion. Yeah, said Tom. Ha, 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 you fooled them. Oh, jeez, Billy sat up. Then he crawled over to the door and peered out through a knot hole. Look at them, peeking up over the stone wall. Watch this. The door swung slowly open, screeching. Billy hopped onto the door sill, into the yard, up onto a stump, splash into a Clapping his arms, rolling his head. Alan and Joe galloped up the hill through the high grass, yelling, Here he comes! Get out of the way! And then Billy stopped hopping and climbing up on the stump, called in a sh shrill, girlish voice, Oh, boys, where are you going? I'd something tear you idle boys. Alan and Joe slopped, stopped and looked back. I oo doing home idle boys, yelling Billy. I do dare. Who's scared, you lunk? asked Alan. Yeah, yelled Joe. I guess I can go home without being called scared if I want to. But ain't oo in a doffy hurry, shouted Billy. I just remember I was supposed to help my mother wash windows this afternoon, said Alan. That's all. He turned and started up through the meadow, his hands in his pockets. Yeah, said Joe, me too. He trudged after Alan.